Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be taking a look at a couple of vintage Marvel magazines that were published in the mid-1970s and they both focus on and look and talk to Don Pembleton, the author of the Fantastic Executioner Classic Men's Adventure series. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's take a look. OK, so the first one we're looking at is this one. It's Marvel Preview number two. Now, that this was published in 1975 and um, both the magazines we're going to look at today uh, feature the Marvel character, the Punisher. Now, the Punisher uh, first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man 129, but these are actually quite early appearances by the Punisher character. And consequently, both these magazines have ended up um, today as quite collectible uh, comics and magazines as you might expect uh, so this is um it's these sort of um magazines these marvel people they weren't sort of drummed down for children there's no comics code authority um so uh you do sort of get more slightly adult themes and they were designed for a, an older market but the editors of um marvel at the time were huge fans of the executioner series and the, the books were selling by the bucket load at this point so that's why the punisher really came about it was an unabashed copy but pendleton being the good-natured chap that he was really didn't seem to mind and uh, he was sat pretty so why should he you know and um he sort of welcomed all the competition didn't really uh let it face him one little bit so there's a little picture of him there and um it is a really, really in-depth interview, the best I've ever read with him. Um, so fast forward here to page 46. I'll give you a little idea of what the uh, actual magazine content is like as well. It's not in colour, it's black and white, like a lot of the Marvel magazines. Um, but it is much more adult than you're perhaps likely, or I would have seen before in a regular sort of Marvel, Marvel comic. And there we are, There's some early Punisher appearances. There we are, the way it was. For those of you who missed them, let's take a rollicking romp through the pulsating Punisher's previous appearances. And there is the first one from Amazing Spider-Man 129. That's a classic, classic issue. But there weren't many prior to this. So it's, as I said, it's an early, um, it's an early Punisher appearance. And that's why that and, of course, the executioner content make this quite a collectible issue. Um, in fact, I did actually have a little look online and both these magazines, um, if you want copies you know in slightly worse condition than this but you know nice sort of collectible ones you're looking at at least 35 pounds or about 50 dollars um, i've seen really nice like graded high grade ones in the hundreds believe it or not so uh, there you go but here we are so this is don in 1975 david Kraft was the uh the um, author of the interview and um, he was sort of tasked by the marvel editors i think he said it was marv wolfman who sent him off and said look i want you to uh go and get an interview with with don pendleton and the author had actually been a fan of the books for ages and had been intending to interview him so uh he said oh yeah okay i shall uh i shall do exactly that which is what he did so in the interview uh i'm obviously i'm not going to go through and read the whole thing out to you i'm, I'm happy to say that this has been really well scanned um tidied up and you can actually view it on um the men's adventure facebook group so i shall put a link down below so you can go directly and read this one at your leisure because it's, it's a really fantastic um interview but um i said nicely illustrated as well they've just obviously got a set of the books and they've taken some of the the artwork from it but basically he uh pendleton um you find out a bit more about pendleton's early career he was actually a really well-paid engineer i had no idea about that it was even back then um, in the late 60s, he was being, being paid a fortune of $20,000 a year. But he started to write. He really, really had the passion for writing and um, managed to get about half that and uh, a year. Um, and they scrimped and saved his family and uh, he, it, until the books really took off. And when, obviously, the executioner books became a hit, he was absolutely uh, rolling in it. And come the end of the interview, he says, which is about book 22 in the series, is when um, the interview ends, because that's what they were published up to that point he was selling up four million copies of his books every year worldwide which is quite quite something isn't it right around the world um the author presses him because initially he seems quite reluctant but the author presses him on the um publication of this one which is sicilian slaughter it's book 16 it's by that imposter jim peterson he doesn't really have a go at the guy but he does sort of 
um, Pendleton himself fell out with Pinnacle and, um, you know, it is, it is sort of mentioned. He sort of skirts over it and he's, you know, happy to say that, you know, they resolved it. But he, he sort of at the time of this interview, he says, I don't really want to dig up old wounds. And, uh, that's fair enough. You know, he, he didn't want to fall out with, uh, um, his publisher because they were doing such a great job come the end, you know. But yeah, it really is. Uh, it, it, it was more in depth than I ever thought I would find in like a Marvel magazine. Really, really did. And I'm glad that the um, the interviewee uh, really pushed Pendleton on that. Now they're using lots of the, the classic uh, Gil Kane, Gil Cohen artwork rather, which is used on the uh, on the book jackets. And of course, there's that great Men's Adventure Library title by Robert Dyson White Door, which looks at um, Gil Cohen's career. It's called One Man Army, and uh, that's highly recommended. And in fact, if you want a like, little overview of the Pendleton era of the execution, I have covered that in a previous video. But at the time, I never had these in my possession. Uh, these aren't actually my copies. They've been borrowed from a friend of mine uh, called Andy. He may have seen some of his card videos on the channel. And uh, Andy had both of these. He said, oh, you should cover these uh, in an execution video. So that's exactly what we're doing. So as you can see, it's quite long. It's involved. It's absolutely knockout. It's really, really recommended that you, uh, if you don't want to track down the original, as I said, I'll pop a link to the uh, the Facebook group so you can have a look at the copy online. So this is the second magazine. It's Marvel Super Action number one. And this is from 1976. And uh, once again, it sports a fantastic Punisher cover. Uh, the Punisher and uh, the Executioner were so closely tied. And, um, you know, if you liked one, you know, you're going to like the other. And that's, I think, what Marvel were aiming for. Once again, this is aimed at the more adult Marvel fan rather than the uh, perhaps a younger fan who might have uh, still been eating up all the superhero stuff. This is for the more mature audience, you know, alongside things like Savage Sword of Conan, which they were publishing around this time. Now, this one isn't an interview with Don Pembleton. This is actually an article about uh, the execution of books and their competitors. That's what this one is. So um, we'll have a look uh, through. I'll give you an idea of what the book's actually like inside. Really, really nice uh, Punisher story here, written by Archie Goodwin. One of the greats. And do enjoy the Punisher. Always have. But the last time I really, really enjoyed the Punisher was the Garth Ennis run. Uh, that was superb, and they're all in graphic novel now, so you can uh, lap those up. They're fantastic. Just, just great. Huntress there, early Huntress appearance. Here we are. I promise the article's in here. We'll get there in a minute. Here we are. So, what's it called? Execution, Destruction and Other Entertainments. Now, sadly, unlike the first, the main interview with Pendleton, I've not been able to find a scan of this one online. No one's posted it on the uh, on the Facebook group, sadly, at least that I know of. But if you've got a link to this online, if you wouldn't mind popping a comment in the description down below, I'll add it to the description and then uh, uh, fans will be able to read both bits rather than just the first interview. But this one's only five pages long. And um, as I said, it just looks at some of the competitors that were around at the time, like uh, the Liquidator or um, uh, Donovan's Devils, uh, which is, uh, um, but the, the biggest one, of course, was the Destroyer series. And we've got the Nick Carter's as well. It says, stylistically, the Destroyer's authors have it all over the Executioner, but style isn't enough. And there we go. Well, we know the Destroyer series ran for a long, long time. So they do put a little checklist in there. So they've got uh, Blood, the Butcher, the DC Man, Death Merchant, the Destroyer, which at the time, obviously they were published by Pinnacle as well, uh, was up to 18 uh, titles in the series. Uh, Jonas Wild, Eliminator. Then the Executioner, which when this was published was up to number 21. Um, Don Pendleton was still writing them. John Eagle, the Expediter. Hitman, the Inquisitor, the Liquidator. Lone Wolf. Now that went on to be quite a big title. At the time there was nine of them. Uh, the Marksman, which was 13. Narc, Peacemakers and the Penetrator, which was on eight eight of them. But they do say overall the Executioner is, is the king. And uh, well... Quite rightly so, I think you, you would agree. Um, so there we are, um, a couple of quite, quite scarce magazines. And if you're a fan 
of the Executioner series and Don Pendleton. I think these will be really nice sort of bookends to your collection. So thanks again to my friend Andy for lending me these. I think I shall try and track down this pair because I think they are pretty darn cool. And uh, as I say, if you're a fan of the Executioner, um, do make sure you check out One Man Army if you're a fan of the artwork. And uh, that previous video, which I'll link to in just a moment and down below, where I analyse the series in a bit more detail, at least the, the early Don Pendleton stories at least. Anyway, thanks very much for watching today. If you've enjoyed it, do please give the video a thumbs up. Do hit that subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.